excellent. All right, Steve. So excellent. <laughs> excellent. So excellent. what do we got going on today? Oh, today's show? exciting day. We got Larry Zonka with us today. Wait a second. The Larry Zonka. The Larry Zonka. Like football like, MVP. Larry yeah, Zonka. Football MVP. 1972 Miami team that went undefeated. <laughs> That's gonna be amazing. What is he coming here to talk about? Well, Larry's originally from Ohio. Okay. And he he currently uh, has a, a house in the Lisbon area, so he he does uh, frequent the the flea market. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, how? I mean, has he been coming to this flea market for a long time? Since 1974, Steve. Well, I guess that's, uh, that's a pretty long <laughs> that's time. That's been a pretty so. long time, yeah. Boy, this is going to be a great episode. I cannot wait to I talk to wait. him. And, of course, we're going to go out in the market. We're going to meet some uh, fantastic people as well. Yeah, so, why, yeah. hey, let's go do it. Why don't we go ahead and do that, Steve? I'm Steve Kreider. I'm Steve Swanson. And, and we, we are, are the, the Flea, flea market, market Fanatics. fanatics. Steve, I guess there's probably no real need to introduce the gentleman standing next to us, but why don't Let's you go ahead and tell the, uh, tell everybody who we have here, because it's pretty darn cool. It's pretty exciting, Steve. We, we have Larry Zonka with us from the, the Miami Dolphins, 1972 Super Bowl MVP. Well, was it 72? 72 uh, is the undefeated season. Undefeated season. And uh, Super Bowl eight. A couple years later, I was the MVP, but that's okay. Oh, you can oh, run it all. Get it uh, yeah, right. No, no, you're, you're my MVP, Larry. That's for sure. That's so for sure. That's, that's awesome. And then uh, you were also the, the comeback player in 1979. Uh, I've forgotten about that. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Yeah, I left for a, for a few years yeah. and uh, bought the farm up here in Lisbon. Okay. And uh, when I say bought the farm, I actually purchased the farm. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Then, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and moved here. I really came to Lisbon, Ohio, because I, I wanted a place for my two sons, young sons, to have a place to grow up like I grew up in Ohio. Right. Up in Stowe, Ohio, up by Kent and Akron area. Okay. And give them the kind of uh, farm uh, rural background to uh, grow up in that, that I had. Right. And uh, when I went back to Stowe, Ohio, to find that, it wasn't there anymore. Cleveland and Akron had literally grown shut and become a, a giant city. And so I looked around Ohio and discovered uh, Lisbon through my brother Joe, who had relatives down here. And we came down and kind of scouted out the area and we ended up buying a, uh, a little cattle operation just, uh, just a little north of town. Wow. So what was, what was it like uh, moving from Ohio and then going playing for the Miami Dolphins and, and working with a, a great legend like Don Shula, you know. In a word, rough. <laughs> <laughs> I left Ohio in 1964, graduated high school and went to Syracuse, New York, up uh, Interstate uh, 90 there, along the lakes. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. If anything went from an already cold place in Ohio <laughs> to an even colder place in Syracuse, New York, and hitchhiked back and forth for a couple of years. and. Uh, Going through Buffalo, New York, and Waterloo, New York, and those places in, in December and January at 20 below and blowing uh, snow made me crave uh, perhaps a warmer place to play <laughs> right, in the NFL. So. You know. <laughs> and the interesting point with that was I was drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 1968, drove down and stayed there. And uh, then Coach Shula, of course, came in 1970. And we started to win and do things. And the way he would motivate me was he knew that I didn't like cold weather. <laughs> so whenever I gave him any heat or any trouble, he would say, I can trade you to Buffalo tomorrow. You can be up in Buffalo blocking for OJ in the snow tomorrow. You know, if you really don't like it that much, well, then we'll fix you up. I guess well, the, uh, the trade off me up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
why don't you tell us a little bit what, what you got going on here today with, okay. with your stuff. You got a, a bunch of interesting things. What, uh, what, what do you got uh, today that, uh, that you most... Uh, That's right, I got a lot of uh, weird antique, vintage, retro and weird things. A um, little bit of everything today. Uh, got a nice Coke chalkboard, some signs, nice old radio here. Some metal chairs, a uh, mid-century nightstand here, some bicycles, got a uh, nice mannequin here, a wagon, and uh, that's pretty much it, you know. Yeah, I came here in 1974, and it was a unique place. It was kind of uh, a little bit frozen in history, I think. You know, right. Lisbon dates back to like uh, pre-statehood for Ohio. Mm -hmm in uh, the dropping off spot from Fort Pitt where people stopped in their covered wagons. After they got through the mountains and the, and the foothills and across the Ohio River, they got here to Lisbon, the first settlement. And that's when they generally started going through their belongings and figuring out that uh, grandma's spinning wheel didn't need to go with them to <laughs> right. Los Angeles and they threw the antiques, antiques off, the, uh, off the wagons. And because of that, of that continuous stream of pioneers going through Lisbon, and throwing things off their wagons here when they first stopped. Uh, Lisbon gained a reputation of uh, being a place that you could purchase uh, antiques, mm -hmm. quite reasonable. And that trading started right here and then mm -hmm. of course led to many other things including right. the uh, Rogers Community yeah. Auction eventually. Yeah. Right. You, the yeah. giant flea market, yes. And you're you're, you're going to get with, uh, you're going to talk with Ken Bear, who's the, uh, you know, the owner of uh, Rogers Community Auction. Well, my name's Ken Bear. I'm president of Rogers Community Auction, um, auctioneer, manager, and granddad started out in 1955, uh, built the produce barn here, and it's kind of just grown from there. <laughs> well, how long have you been coming to the, the market? Well, the market was kind of a, uh, Ken's father, uh, when I first got here in 1974, was an auctioneer and he would have auctions around the different parts of the area. And he sold all farm goods principally, machinery, animals, all the things. But he also got into, he dabbled in, in antiques and antiquity. And people started to come just follow him at all these different locations around, mm -hmm. around the, uh, the entire county. And then it, it was an idea that he had to come here and centralize and try to bring all those different sales together under one roof. And we all thought he was crazy. <laughs> well, we didn't think it. We probably knew he was crazy. But, Who's but gonna go he, to Rogers, Ohio? Well, that's, that's it. Yeah. He, right. uh, I just didn't see it when he talked about it, but he believed in it. And mm -hmm. you know, it started out with one building, then two, and now, my gosh, it's its own little city right here. Mm -hmm. that, that has, it's, and you see people coming from as far as a thousand miles away dragging yeah. things here to sell. Right. It's a lot of money for you. How do you for five bucks? Let's make a deal. Four seventy-five, five dollar bill. A lot of money, hundred dollars, five bucks. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to get a five for five. We're going to get a five for five over here. I got it doubled up. I got it doubled up over here. Oh, Mike, you have a you have a broken you have a gas can there that's all dented and right. That up. is that that is true. It is a little dented, but you know, someone's looking for one just like this, so I got it right here. <laughs> this is ten dollars, by the way. Ten dollars. Yeah. What do you got for the mass? Uh, the mass, we got some nice, cool, uh, vintage, old school. Halloween masks here, perfect if you uh, want to rob a bank or, you know, do whatever you want to do. These are going to be uh, three bucks, two for five, and that's a bargain. Excellent. Yeah. And, and uh, we got a lot of uh, great stuff and a lot of uh, interesting, weird people to sell it to. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. Do you find the weird people gravitate to your stuff? Uh, believe it or not, I... Um, attract weird people like flies to honey, you know, no matter uh, where I go or what I do, pretty much like the strangest, weirdest person in the whole entire place will come up and want to become best friends with me. So uh, that's usually how it goes. Okay. Right. Ready? And action. I'm Randy Prino. I'm the owner of Lock 24. And yes, I am a flea market fanatic. Just keep so your eyes here. Just look, don't look at me. Oh. <laughs>
Yeah, just keep looking forward. Don't get out of the way because I know you're looking and you want to keep looking at me, but that's all right. You're going to do it again? And action. I'm Randy Prino, the owner of Lock 24, and I am a flea market fanatic. I'm Randy Prino, the owner of Lock 24, and yes, I'm an owner of. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is not going to work. <laughs> I'm Randy Prino, I own our Lock 24, and I am a pretty market fanatic. You know, this has all been a great uh, honor to have you. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I have a, a question or two for you, Larry. Okay, you, um, and what, what I'd like to, to ask you is, if, if you could, you, you won the Super Bowl, you were undefeated, um, and if you could go back and, and kind of talk to yourself after that moment, you know, when you're in the in the locker room, is there any advice you would give yourself as far as your career or how, how that kind of went for you? I had a coach named Shula. I think my best advice to myself was <laughs> don't argue with him. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I argued with him, I lost. Well, I see. <laughs> so I, see. I think no. that would be the only post uh, yeah. post career advice I might go back and give yeah, myself right, is right. keep your mouth shut because yeah. it, it was very difficult at the beginning because he is a. Uh, He's a forceful, uh, single-minded coach, mm -hmm. and that's what it takes to have success in the NFL, mm -hmm. back then as well as now. Mm -hmm. And uh, to not get in his, uh, on his bad side, yeah. which I managed to do several times. <laughs> you know. uh, he's, interesting enough, he's from uh, the Cleveland uh, area as a boy. He grew up here in Cleveland. Yeah, a lot of rich history in, in, in Ohio, Pennsylvania area with uh, uh, football and athletes. Particularly Lisbon, mm -hmm. Ohio, mm -hmm. and not just, you know, the athletic part of it. Joe mm -hmm. Namath, uh, Jim, um, John, Joe Montana, you know, here's a list a mile long right, of uh, right. guys that are now in the Hall of Fame that came within a, like a, a 70 mile radius of where we're standing right, right here, right. Right. which is interesting because back in the day they, when they first dedicated the Hall of Fame, I was a junior in high school, and I flipped school and went down and, <laughs> and tried wow. to sneak into the goings-on, got thrown out, yeah. snuck in again, uh -huh. and uh, was standing there when they actually turned the shovels of dirt before they built the Hall of Fame. Uh -huh. Well, now I don't think you have to sneak in. Nope. Get to walk through the front door. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> front door. <laughs>
uh, Museum of Natural History for flea markets, <laughs> because all of that was consolidated between the time of your father and, and the transition from your father to you is when this all came about, and that was the time that I was here and actually got to see that happen. Oh, yeah. What are your fondest memories of when this actually started to take shape? Oh, it was, yeah, Dad took over somewhere in the early 80s, and that's when the building process started. I think this building was 83 and you just worked every day and <laughs> tried to fill the need, I guess you say. So it wasn't a, a necessarily plotted, laid out strategy to come to where we are today. No, it was just like, okay, this needs to expand here, this needs to expand here, and it just sort of grew up around we you. We just filled the need. Whatever, if we seen a need for something or for the community, we build it and, and the they would come. make it work. And, and the fanatics would show up. The fanatics would show <laughs> up. That's it. Question I'd be remiss yeah. if I didn't ask you this. Knowing the history of Lisbon, the Rogers uh, Community Auction, and your family, did you learn to auctioneer? by going to a school, or did you just pick it up from being around your dad, and where did he learn it? Well, he learned it from his granddad. We all went to school at Reppert's out in Indiana. And There's I, a school? I, yes, Reppert's School of Auctioneering. They're okay. in Indiana, been there for 100 years. To answer your question, I probably learned from dad, but Somebody asked me one day, are you going to be an auctioneer like your dad? And I said, no, I'm going to be like my granddad. <laughs> now, dad told that story off me. <laughs> I think I was six or something. <laughs> there was a common uh, byline here, particularly back when you were a kid and I was much younger, uh, was we see it Rogers, you know, I'll see it Rogers. Mm -hmm. That was like... Uh, you know, instead of the local pub or the local thing, the, all yeah. the farmers, all the people that dealt in equipment, produce, all the things, antiquities, they'd say, oh, I'll see you down at Rogers. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. a common line. Just and I saw plates coming into this place. That's when I realized your dad was really on to something. When I started to see plates from Illinois and plates from the other side of Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Kentucky. West Virginia. People pulling in here because it was, in a, it was no longer just a... a, a a sale, it became an event, mm -hmm. and people came for for the 24-hour, 36-hour period, and uh, usually hauled a lot of things with them, but ended up hauling more away than they actually <laughs> hauled to the, the auction. I think that was the key note of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> one man's junk, or one man's uh, flea market material mm -hmm. is another man's treasure. Treasure, that's yeah. it. And yeah. uh, whatever your stuff is, you're tired of that, you don't want it anymore, but that stuff over there looks pretty good, so mm -hmm. you, you end up just doing circle a big of, circle. That's it. Yeah. Let's take a ride around. Take okay. a look at things, all right? Yep. Uh, so we yeah. Uh, no, they're going to go in front of us. Oh, okay. Ollie's got a camera. Guess we'll get to start bull****** after we pass the saucer stand. <laughs> um, You're going to have to get through there. You're, yeah. you're, you're losing them. I don't even think the horn works on this thing. Yeah, yeah. We're still close there. to the railroad tracks. Yeah. That. Oh yeah, there comes. That's unusual. We don't run but about once a week anymore. <laughs> well, I'm lucky about trains. They come by a lot. Man, you got no shortage of people. How many how many people would you say are in the average day when you're doing it and you got a full deal going down? Oh, well, there's day? probably forty to fifty thousand average. And Forty to fifty thousand yeah. people. Holiday, holiday weekends. Oh, one Fourth of July. When Fourth of July landed <laughs> right on a Friday, we had somewhere past a hundred, and who knows? I said uh, the Museum of Natural History. I should have said Grand Central Station. <laughs> yeah. Now well, the train's coming in now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That one Fourth of July, we had traffic backed up to. One guy said the state line. Um, you're going to have to get through there. You're, yeah. you're, you're losing them. I don't even think the horn works on this thing. Watch yourself. Watch out. <laughs> Dangerous. You're going to stay up there. You're going to stay in their wake or we get, we get, <laughs> we get away we from get, the camera. Need a horn on here. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Yeah, but Forty to fifty thousand people. That's a lot of cars. Oh, yeah. have, your parking lots are probably bigger than what the original place was. Oh yeah, we cover probably a hundred and fifty to two hundred acres just in parking lot and market. Just parking lot. Parking lot and market. Unbelievable what this thing has changed. How the, this thing has changed since mm -hmm. 1975. Yeah, just, oh yeah. Of course, yeah. that's what. That's a that's a few years ago. So. You got it. Uh, yeah, for men. I'll tell you what, your grandpa and your dad would be tickled pink to see all this. They, this is, I, they, this has got to be what they were envisioning. Well, I think dad more than granddad. Granddad loved the auctions. He just loved to see people coming up and bidding and the whole, yep. the yep. whole atmosphere, right? Yeah. That's really what I, as a, as a, you know, we started out filling in when we first bought the farm. We filled in the equipment we needed and did the things we did. Then we kept going to the sales because it was kind of a social. Oh, yeah. Uh, enjoyment kind of thing. You know, I like to go I like to get a hot dog and a beer and walk around and listen to the auctioneer and, you know, talk to people. It was a kind of way farmers and people that worked hard with the land could socialize without necessarily having to meet in church to do it. You That's, know what I mean? That was what. And a farmer has so few hours away from what he's doing that, that are justifiable. You can't just go to a picnic. You know, a farmer no. doesn't have time to do that. But when you incorporate picking up some things, some parts you need, or something that was going on, going being sold at the auction, that was a form of recreation, plus it also had a, a, a byline of work. You think there's more Amish now than there was 30 years ago? Or, or oh, yeah. There's they're more, they're, they're making a steady diet of being up here. Huh? Yeah, they're moving into the surrounding area. Part of it's because of this place. They can market their wares, make goods, yeah. whatever, craft items. Yeah, right down uh, their alley. Yep. And they love the auctions too. Well, I hope it works out. I hope the TV program about it works out because it's fun. It's a. This has been a. You're one of the few people I know that still enjoys going to work. And I mean, I'm sure there's days when that could be pretty thin. The enjoyment. <laughs> But on the other hand, yeah. I've, I know you and your dad, and I know your dad loved it. In the height of the auction, when all the things were happening around him, he loved being in the middle of it, particularly when he had three or four people that were hot bidders, oh, that yeah. were about half pissed off at each other. <laughs> and he'd get in the middle of that and coax them, and it was just, a, you know, I enjoyed standing around having a beer watching him eat his frontwurst <laughs> while he did, sang his song and got them, you know. <laughs> They moved the next piece of equipment, it would be just the reverse order, but the same <laughs> same four guys. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, they, you know, thank you, Larry, for um, taking the time and uh, joining us here in the Flea Market Fanatics. We, we do sure. appreciate it. Definitely, and, uh, uh, definitely appreciate you being here. Uh, we're, we are all very excited to have you. And uh, if we could, could get maybe get a picture of your uh, Super Bowl ring. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's yeah, <laughs> right. That's not that I'm short, <laughs> yeah, that's... but I am shorter than you guys are. Yeah. Well, if you want to feel really short, come to the NFL with me sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I just go out for the coin toss. Now. <laughs> yeah. I'm out there looking, I'm looking at these guys. Yeah, I know. They're in, you know? like they're right. giants. So. Yeah. But thanks again, yeah. and uh, sure. thank you, Ken. appreciate it. Sure. And, uh, thank you, Larry. And now, yeah. uh, Larry, if you don't mind, real quick, do you want to get him saying, "I'm a flea market. I'm Larry Zonka. I'm a flea market fanatic." If you don't All right. mind, closer. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm Larry Zonka, and I'm a flea market fanatic. This one? I'm Larry Zonka, and I'm a flea market. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second, serious. <laughs> I don't know which one of you touched my butt, but there's going to be trouble here. Yeah, no, it's not me. It's other Steve. I'm Larry Zonka, and I'm a flea market fanatic. <laughs> oh.